guys, welcome to another episode of Teen Stock Queen Femi Podcast. It's your host Oluwani Femi, and I'm so happy to be here once again. I hope you're doing fine, and I hope you're doing good too. So last week's episode, we talked about finding your true self, and I had an amazing guest speaker, Temulolu Aoladele Asagula, and she came on the episode to dissect and enlighten us about the issues people face in finding their true self and how they can find their true self and trust me it was an amazing episode and you should really listen to it so yeah i want us to specially pay for our country nigeria i mean nigeria is going through tough times right now and i know that we are definitely going to get out of it so rather than getting frustrated or getting sad by what our country is facing i want you to say a word of prayer for nigeria in your secret place and i want you to keep believing and know that nigeria is definitely going to be great again so yes keep up the good work of faith i also want to especially thank my listeners for their support so far for always listening to every episode reposting sending in their reviews i really appreciate it a whole lot and i don't take you for granted thank you so much and god bless you that being said let's get into the business of the day Welcome back from that short break, guys. So on today's episode, we have an amazing guest speaker in our midst here today. So with great joy in our hearts, I would like to welcome Olamide Oladeru, popularly called Amari Slide. Hi, Olamide. Hi, hi, Nifemi. How are you doing today? Good afternoon. How are you doing too? I'm very well, thank you. So the topic for today is coping with academic pressure and i realized that most people especially young minds and teenagers tend to go through this phase at a particular time in their life so i wanted us to discuss it and i wanted you to enlighten us about this topic so i'll first start with how do you feel being on today's episode <laughs> okay so i'm super excited about this i don't know if it's for me to come speak right that's making making me so excited the one thing i can be so sure about that i'm excited about is those who are speaking to which is the teenagers right they've always been like a big big part of my life (laughs) maybe because i was once a teenager so i can relate with some of the struggles that they are going through so i'm so excited to be here i'm so excited to have you here so so can you give a introduction about yourself let's get to know you Okay, so um, Olamide Oladero, like you've rightly introduced, right? But then I'm mostly referred to by Amaris. And um, I am a product manager, but by the side, I'm also a child educator, right? With Chess Islam Africa. So what I do, I'm so passionate about children. I mean, it's littered around my page, right? And this is something I've been doing since 2017. And um, yeah, when I was in school, I've always reached out to children, you know, from the orphanage to um, out of children's schools on the streets, you know, around the neighborhood and all of that. So it's my passion to actually go into that space sometime soon. I'm there already, but then I'm moving closer to getting into the space fully. So yeah, that's it. That's really nice. And I've, I've gone through your page and I actually see the things you do for children. And I feel like our our interests align because I'm also a lover of children and I'm so happy with the things you are doing. And I pray God continues to bless you and uphold you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for that, Femi. Your Instagram you. page name is Amaris Light. So, like, I am curious. So, I wanted to know how did you come about that name? Okay. So, these are two words coming together right you know many times um when you talk about pressure pressure is in coming different folds right and this is something that we are saying specifically academic pressure now academic pressure can come to you in whatever level you find yourself as either as a student in primary secondary or university or those who are even pursuing their masters or their phd right now i know that the category of those we are talking to are those who are called um teenagers right, who can be in secondary school, either junior or senior, or in university. So academic pressure to this set of people, I, I believe it is when you probably have too much to handle, 
or probably because of lack of self-awareness or one or two issues is why you would actually feel pressure from academics right so academic pressure let me just put in a statement would mean that you are feeling um some kind of overwhelming um what's it called experience right due to academics or due to probably your courses or your subject in your class thank you so much for that i like that we have already set the foundation on what academic pressure is about so i would like to also ask that what are the major causes of academic pressure can you shed light on them okay so you know uh, while i was giving the last um foundational background i mentioned something like probably not know yourself now one of the issues i have found out with academic pressure is number one lack of self awareness mm-hmm. right and probably i should break it down more so that everyone can really understand so while i was in secondary school i had friends who if they don't come to class they will still do well right i had friends who even if they are in class it still takes extra mile for them to really understand what is going on in class right and some of them i had other people who whereby once they are in class they are very good with, they are very good to go either they read or not they are going to pass <laughs> i don't know if you understand and we have these categories of students right represented currently on this call which i believe that you will be able to identify yourself if you have identified yourself yeah. right so self awareness in this case or let me say lack of self awareness in this case would mean that maybe a student doesn't know when to read or let's say the student even knows when to read but is not reading right so let me say one of the major causes of academic pressure would be lack of self awareness so i myself I had to find out when is it possible for me to read and really understand i found out it was in the night right even though i love to stay in class i don't like to miss my classes because i categorize myself as someone who has a magnetic brain and when i say magnetic brain here yeah, the way we are here together if you were right in front of me and you do anything my brain stores it immediately and it's very easy for me to remember even if it was just a tap you did with your finger to pass a message across to me right so in that kind of case i dare not miss a class because if i miss a class it's going to be a very difficult um, for me to be able to catch up with what whatever it is that happens in that class i don't know if if that is very um understandable right so you need to identify yourself right one of the major causes of academic pressure would be lack of um self awareness and the second one would be going with the crowd mm-hmm. right so because your friend in class is not reading you too you are not reading <laughs> I feel like it's still on that self awareness. Do you understand? But you can't go with the crowd. You can't go with what everybody is doing. If you identify yourself well enough, you will know that you don't need to go with the crowd. I don't know if you understand. So you sit, you study, you understand. If you don't understand some things, you have to meet your teachers or let's even say lecturers in some cases for those who are in the university already. I don't know if you understand. So you need to meet them. You can meet them or you meet seniors or you know just don't go with the crowd so i got into uni as a 16 year old girl and when i got to uni most of my mates were a bit older than me right however i kept on make, meeting them to ask them questions about my course because i got into school a bit late in january people were already in school since like october <laughs> right and then i asked them all oh, this and everybody kept on saying this course is hard this course is hard you cannot pass it you cannot ah uh-uh. ah so much negativity everywhere so i had to look for someone who was a bit older right i think the person was in 300 or there about was the person who was telling me you can pass sociology like anything it is as simple as anything just put your heart to it and then you so imagine i'd gone with the crowd i'm sorry i'm not sure how that graduated or graduated because i would have had a very bad mentality right so i think i'm just going to stop on the two major courses because it looks like i'm elaborating more than i should elaborate Thank so yeah for that so during while i was preparing for this recording session i had some people ask a few questions as regarding this topic the first question i get is how do you deal with difficulties in studying okay uh, how do you deal with difficulties in studying now the difficulties would i think is relatable right or um i think i'm sorry it's relative and also relatable right So now it's relative in the sense that I don't know what any other person would term as difficulties in studying. Would it be that you are when you're studying you are you don't assimilate faster 
or when you're studying, you find it difficult to really understand some concepts, right? Now, if take for instance for me, I had difficulties when it comes to mathematics during my 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 what was it called secondary school days, right? Mathematics was I, I found it interesting to be very honest, and I think I found it interesting because I felt it was very challenging. Mm. I don't know if that's like an irony, right? Mm. But I found it very challenging, and then at the same time, it was difficult for me. But what did I even do? I knew I had people in my class who were in that subject anyhow, mm. right? My name is Olamide, and I had a friend whose name was Olamide, and he was a maths guru. I later found out he had a personal teacher. My own parents couldn't afford a personal teacher at the time, right? So what did I do? I had to collaborate with him. I had to become his friend because I wanted to learn what he knew about mathematics, right? So I met him and then he started teaching me some things to the extent that we became rivals <laughs> rivals in class because I started using my mathematics too, right? So one of the things that you want to do first is identify that this subject is an issue for you. Yeah. Right, because you can't actually tackle a problem. You can't successfully find a solution to a problem if you don't know the problem, right? So if it's mathematics, if it's French, I don't know what course or what student is here, but I'm going to use myself as an example to say, oh, if it's introduction to sociology, that is my problem. Once I identify it, I look for people who are good around this subject. And in looking for people who are good around the subject, be careful also, right? Look for people who are good around the subject and become their friends. Ask them questions. Don't shy away from the fact that you don't know it, right? So meet people, become their friend. They'll be able to explain to you. Secondly is maximize the resources that you find around. I use the library a lot, both in secondary school and in, and in university, right? People knew me a lot in my library because I was always going to the library. I wanted to study. I wanted to understand more. Some things were very difficult and I would just have to go back right get to the library and really help myself out i i used a lot of resources so you know use the library if you have one in your school if you don't have one please if you have your parents phone or you have a personal phone use it to study nothing is hard i believe nothing is hard if you put your heart to it you say i really want to get this thing right yeah so move with people who know it my best friend became my best friend because she was the first in class and i had to beg her i became my best friend by force right until i started taking second in my class i don't know if you understand so if you find people who, who are good with something become their friends don't beef them don't become angry because they are doing well become their friend instead ask them questions and also if you have difficulties in studying i think one of the things you can also do is to meet your teachers yeah. they can 100 percent um explain yeah i had teachers who were very understanding in my school that if you meet them in their staff room, they would explain to you no matter what. I had issues with economics at some point mm -hmm. and I went to meet my teacher. She was the one who was telling me, oh, this thing is not hard. Do it this way, understand it this way until I became good and I was able to catch up even while she's teaching in class, mm -hmm. right? So I think um, I've given three points. <laughs> Thank you so for much for that. Shedding light on that. And I really love when you said that we should not beef them because People, when they have difficulties in a particular course, they feel that, okay, because this person knows it more than me, I don't want to have mm. this person because the person might come out as proud and then they just tend to, okay, I'm just not going to go and meet that person. So I like when you said mm. don't beef them because that is actually important. Yes. Because the moment you start beefing them, that would not even mm. make you want to approach them. So Yeah, yeah actually. Yeah. So thank you for sharing that. So the second question I, I get is, what do you do when your grades start slipping and you get demotivated? <laughs> okay, the first thing is the aspect of demotivated. I don't think anything should get me demotivated. Although we are humans, right? We are humans and um, I know you can feel pain that uh, what happened to my grade. I was in 200 level and the first and the last D I ever had my results occurred. I was bittered I was pained <laughs> I cried a lot right mm -hmm. but at the end of the day after I met my, like my school mentor it was one that told me your grades don't define you right your grades don't define who you are at the same time even when you encounter difficulties use it as a challenging situation to rise up mm -hmm. right use it as a challenging situation to get yourself into the loop to do better 
So even when your grades start, you know, slipping, it's not the time for you to say, oh, I give up, I cannot do this well. Mm-mm. That's not who you're called to be. You're called to be a fighter and a warrior, right? You're called to be a light, somebody who can do this then. So even when your grades start slipping, identify the situation, what is really happening. Many times when we find issues, you know, occurring in our grades, it's either we are not doing something correctly, mm. right? Or we have become negligent at some point, right? So you that would spend a lot of time to actually study before, you now find yourself, you know, probably scrolling too much on the internet or you're sitting with a TV or you are going out with friends when you are supposed to be reading. That's actually your fault on this stage, right? So if you are going to really help yourself, identify the situation. Is it a course that is too hard or is it the teacher who is stressing out? Because I know in universities, we usually have issues with great lecturers and departments right this one might not be your fault i had a school daughter who was having issues with her grade and you know she would always cry and tell me mama i'm reading and all of those things and i'm like i know you are reading probably it's just this department and that's where prayer comes up too we have to use prayers to wash some things out yes it's great it doesn't define you but at the same time if you have the opportunity to do it well do it well and excellently right so don't allow your sleeping of grades to get you demotivated it should be one of the things that will help you right to rise up again so identify the situation what is causing my grade to start sleeping once you identify you can start tackling it right if it's negligent if it's you wasting time when you're if it's you procrastinating things right probably even submit a result um, an assignment or stuff and it affects your grade i don't know if you understand it's an issue from one's end right but if it has to do with um maybe assimilating or maybe it's something, probably you're not studying at the right time. Imagine you read over the night and it's not your thing. Yeah. It's going to be difficult for you to assimilate in the morning when you get to class, mm-hmm. right? So if you, if you are a day person, you want to structure your time. I think from secondary school, I've been working with time allotments for things I do in my life and I still do it till today. So you can structure your time. Oh, when I wake up in the morning, I do my morning devotion, I pray. I, I have my breakfast or I, or I arrange the house. I don't know. I'm speaking to two categories of people now, right? You you do all you have to do in the morning. You go to class. By the time you're done in class, maybe you're waiting for another lecturer to come in or you're waiting for, or there's a free period as in secondary school. Carry your book and read it if you're a day person. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you understand. Gratify, um, um, don't gratify pleasure at that point. Don't don't say, oh, I want to go and play because my friends are playing. It's your time to read. Don't forget, right? So read your book when you're supposed to read your book. And I'm going to leave everyone with this thing. My school mentor would usually say something like, pay now and, pay, and play later, mm-hmm. right? Pay the price now and then play later. And I don't know if I would have time to talk about that, but it was really a philosophy of life that helped me through all the times. That even when my friends were going to party in university, me, I didn't go. I was just in my class. Or I would just stay in the library and reach and help. And it really helped me. The first five people that I was going to graduate, I was amongst them. I was sec- second best graduating student in my department then. And it just made all the sense that this really helped me out of 200 and something. So I, I, I don't know if that really helps. It's really helped. I like the part, the part of setting a time structure. Because I'll also say yeah. that that i'm not the type that reads overnight so anytime from 11 p.m i'm already feeling sleepy and i'm like i can't come at this so i already try to maximize the daytime to read mm-hmm. i can't yeah I can't so it's all about understanding yourself and setting a time that you feel comfortable for you yeah so much yeah fun. actually so the main actually. thing of today how do i navigate or cope with academic pressure okay how do i navigate or cope with academic pressure okay so you we've had, we've already established what academic pressure could be right the major causes the difficulties right and um, now you want to navigate it it's like a progression from after you've identified an issue what is the cause of this Right, this would help you to really understand how to go about it. Right, so take for instance, I'm going to use myself for an example. I was in school and I was, um, you know, the course I said I had a D in was psychology. It wasn't my major course, right? My, my major course was sociology. 
psychology was a bit tricky at some points, even though I enjoyed it because it's I was using it to joke with my friends that oh I cannot read your mind. It's a lie. I wasn't reading any mind, right? And the more I joked with this course, the more serious I became about it. And then I landed in a D, right? Which was a very bad thing because it was even a three unit or four unit course, if I can remember. And those of us that are in university can understand what that means. A D on your, you know, on your GPA. So after I identified that I joked a lot with the course, what I did was the next semester when I had this same, I had a similar course that has to do with psychology. I didn't joke again with it. Hmm. This time I gathered resources. Oh my goodness. I gathered resources. I did, you know, um, research. I kept on finding out how to go about this thing. Right. And this is just one of the things that really helped me. I didn't give up. You can't give up because um, something is pressurizing you. Mm. Once you give up, you are, I mean, it's, it's off, mm. right? People will give up a, um, faster, are quite, oh, let me say, they are much more depleted earlier. Give it all your best first. Don't give up about it. So one cue or one um, point I'm going to give first is don't give up. Academic pressure is not the end of the world. So tell you that by the time you graduate from school, you are coming into the real world to come and face much more utter pressure. <laughs> so if you have academic pressure currently, is a is an opportunity for you to grow. It will help you grow. It will help you build some kind of strength that even when you are faced with other things, you will be able to withstand it. I went to a school where we didn't have lights for the four years. There was no light that school for four years. And so you can imagine how students were reading. I was always reading with candles and I had issues with my eyes. I was already, always reading with candles or touch lights. And there are days that I won't even be able to charge my uh, my gadgets and I would have to, you know, go to another church far from my hostel and go and read there. You can, I, I think that was even academic pressure on its own. <laughs> I don't know if you understand, but I needed to pass these exams. I needed to pass my courses. I needed to graduate to the fine color. My parents were paying the money and all of that. I couldn't disappoint them because oh, the school environment was not conducive enough, right? So I didn't give up. And that's one thing I think we should all do. Don't give up on this issue. Once you find out what the problem is, start tackling it, right? So just have the mindset, I'm not going to give up on this guy. It's you that is going to give up on me <laughs> instead. And that is by me passing the, um, that particular you know course or it could even be my department. I'm going to ace it. Meet people who are doing better in that department, people who are higher than you, or let me say in in in, in class, right? And if it's secondary school, so I had issues with biology at some point. And one of the reasons why I keep referring back to myself is for you to know that this thing is not a new thing. It's something that happens to people, right? You are not the only one feeling the pressure if you have a pressure that has to do with this, right? So biology was hard for me and all of that, but I had to meet you know, my teacher, I had to meet my friend, and it also meant that I needed to listen more. So navigating it first would be that you are not giving up, and then you would have strength to scale through the whole issue. I don't know if that helped. Yeah, that helped. Thank you so much. So my listeners like stories a whole lot. So I would love it if you can share an experience of a time that you felt pressured academically and how you were able to push through. Okay, it looks like I mentioned, you know, my experience in bits and pieces while I was talking. But one I'm going to, the one I'm going to refer to is mathematics. I'm still going to use mathematics because right now I love mathematics a lot, right? You know, when my cousins are back, sometimes they stay with us. So sometimes when they are back, they're like, oh, sister, please come and teach me this one. I'm like, bring it, bring it. And I'm teaching them. And it wouldn't have been my testimony today to teach them mathematics because what? If I didn't, you know, at that time, stayed with my friend to help me out with the whole issue, right? And it wasn't just me going to meet my friend by the name of Lumide. I also went to extra classes outside of school where it was free. Don't forget, I said my friend had um, extra teachers, right? And my own could, my own parents could not afford at that time. So what I did was during summer, um, I think there's this summer lessons or stuff that happens around you know, when people, when children are on, or when students are on, what's it called, holidays. And even in uni too, there's something called tutorial classes where people who are good in those courses will come and take you free of charge without paying any money. And once I identified that that was one of my friend's strengths, I found a way to do it for myself too. By attending, um, what's it called, by attending a free 
summer lesson that was happen- happening around my house by a church, Deeper Life Church, <laughs> right? So I went there and this was where they taught me other things, apart from things I've been learning from him, right? So I went there again, I learned so many things when it comes to mathematics, to the extent that the equation aspect that was always confusing for me became much simpler, even when they introduced a very tough one. I think when I go back to school, that, that term, I was like, maybe it was just two of us who knew about almighty formula, right, in mathematics. I don't know if that rings a bell, yeah. but some mathematics guru on the call will, they will know what this is. To the extent that I still remember this this formula current, I still remember. The way I mentioned, I still remember, right? And that was because um, I was able to um, find a solution around it. Even though I didn't have all the structures, I didn't, I didn't have a podcast to help me, right? I didn't have a podcast to say, oh, this is how to navigate this um, period. But for me, finding out that, oh, I can learn from my friend, I can do what it did, right? And all of that really, really helped me. So I went for summer lessons in secondary school and in uni, when I had issues with my psychology course, I had to start going for tutorials. I went to the library, gathered, you know, gathered resources. I went to my friends, um, senior friends now to collect their resources, right? And how did I get over it? I've always been somebody who, <laughs> who, um, how would I say it now? I, I, I love challenges a lot. That's just me, wow. right? If something is challenging me, it's a, it's always an avenue for me to show that challenge that I'm struggling that you right so you can't push me down mm. right um two years ago was it two years ago or last year yeah two years ago i applied for some programs right like communities i wanted to join because of um the space that i find myself in child educator and all of that i applied to chess and slum two years ago and they were not going to pick me it's very competitive to join chess and slum africa right because so many people will just come just for the glam that they have currently Right. So they also have like a very good scrutiny to pick anything. Right. So I I applied that to um last I think it was last three years because I it's already two years now that I've been with Chess and Slum. And I applied, they didn't pick me up. I was like, okay, what do you people have that me I don't have? It was it was a challenge for me, right? It was a challenge for me and I had to go back and check. And then when I found out what the secret was, I went back again, I applied and I was selected you know, the next year. And that was it for me. So for me, I don't give up on challenges. I see it as an opportunity for me to grow, for me to get better and for me to build strength because more challenges will come. That's just it. Thank you so much. I mean, you motivate me a whole lot because I love the fact that you are able to stand strong in the face of challenges because someone like me, it, it takes the grace of God to actually come out of any challenge that I might seem to be going through. I would say that secondary school was fun for me. I mean, that time it was just normal play. The pressure was not that much. But on getting to university, because I'm currently studying pharmacy, I would say that academic pressure has dealt with me like shaggy times that I will cry, <laughs> times that I will say, ah, I'm not yeah. going again. And like, I'll considering yeah. if I wanted to do the course again but then I've been able to push through by the grace of God and yes I really love what God. you said there by saying do not give up because that is just the truth yeah. do not give up no yeah. matter the challenges or whatever we might face so thank you so much Olamide for that so before thank we wrap you. up for today I don't know if you added in your introduction that you are a podcaster because I also saw that in your page <laughs> So I'd like you to share more about what your podcast is about and educate us on your podcast. Okay. Oh, thank you so much for the opportunity, Nifemi. And I I, I, I didn't even, um, what was it called, acknowledge the fact that I'm grateful for this, you know, opportunity to speak to your audience because it's, I know um, for you to actually qualify anybody to come into your, your, you know, to come to speak to your audience means that something must have resonated or you know what is good for your people right so thank you so much for that opportunity and for my podcast i started my podcast 2022 with you know all shades of playing i've been doing imaginary podcasts for the longest like i'll just speak to imaginary people and 2022 i felt it was time for me to launch and so i i launched out and what my podcast really addresses is some of the things that we have spoken today right maybe not academic pressure as a um, as a topic 
right but many times i just speak about how you can keep going how you wouldn't allow challenges to hold you down i i consider myself a resilient person right and i also think that every single person i come across can become resilient if they can see life through the same lens that i see it through right so my podcast is just about everyday lessons i could talk about how i'm chasing my goal right now you know and some of those other things that has to do with life so that's just what is everyday lessons majorly that i speak about on my podcast i'm definitely going to add your podcast to my podcast list right now <laughs> all right thank you do you have any special advice for our listeners okay uh so it was when we were talking that i just remembered that um one of the pressure i had during academics or during my start my time in school was when i was writing my final year thesis mm-hmm. right and it was it was a crazy one because i wrote it by myself i can stand anywhere to post about that and i was preparing for exams to write and that was where the philosophy of life of pay now and play later came to challenge me right so you know many times when you say things um those words will come and try you i don't know if you found out mm-hmm. and when you encourage somebody you to you will fall into situations that will need you to encourage yourself right so i was writing my project and it was a lot tough you know you mentioned that sometimes you would cry and say you're not doing anything i cried mm-hmm. right i cried Uh, it was tough for me to write my thesis and my supervisor wasn't a nice um in quotes <laughs> she wasn't a nice person per se that would just overlook your comma or your dotted i if it's not well or dotted and all of that she would circle it to red and you have to go back to do it again right so it was a moment for me that really tried my resolve to remain resilient in times of um you know anything that was pressurizing me at that point and My last advice would just be for you to be a resilient person. Being a resilient person also means that sometimes you don't allow your emotions to lead you. Yeah. Right? Your emotions would not lead you. You will stand in face of whatever it is that is troubling you. Stand firm and say, "This guy, I love to cause issues. This guy, <laughs> you're not going to finish me. I'll finish you by myself." And you just see yourself on the other side. These things don't last forever. Mm. Right? Issues don't last forever. They are temporary. and when they come to you is for you to build up so choose it take it as an opportunity for you to build up and um, don't let it make you feel down it doesn't even define who you are that's just the thing it doesn't define who you are it only makes you get better in the face of trouble imagine today i'm able to speak because i went through all of those moments right tomorrow it could be your turn to speak yeah. what would be your testimony the testimony should be that you were resilient through it thank you Thank you so much. I Oluani Femi I'll be a resilient person. Thank you so much for that advice. That's the spirit. <laughs> It caught yeah. in my heart and I really want to thank you especially for this opportunity for creating our time to be on this episode with me. God bless you so much and I love what you are doing as a child educator. I mean impacting lives. That is something good and I'm so happy. that you are doing something like that and every god is going to continually supply every single of your needs and as you keep making every child out there happy you keep blessing you abundantly in Jesus name and so guys that's the end so of- much welcome so guys that's the end of today's episode thank you so much for staying till the end of today's episode i love you guys so much but remember god loves you more bye